Great, I don't know. As usual, through the center. Capture. And capture. Let's put a check on the king. This looks very simple. But it can be complicated if they're not wanting to exchange the queen. All right. So they kind of suffocated their king for a bit. So we're obviously looking for a Fianchetto type of game. We don't like the Fianchetto. So we're just going to bring the bishop here. Attacking the weak pawn. Bring the queen here. If they forget themselves, we get a check, but not a mate. If they want to come and attack us, then we can get a mate. They haven't forgotten themselves, but is there anything that we can do to keep the pressure on? Um, boom, boom, boom. Little touch here, but we get rid of the bishop. Maybe if we castle, and then if we get the rook here, we'll have a two-on-one. It's a bit slow because I think the knight's just going to attack the queen. But anyway, let's go for that. So the idea being, yeah, the knight's going to attack the queen straight off. We said that, didn't we? Right, so we can get our queen trapped if we're getting a little bit too arty over on this side of the board. Got a safe zone here. Safe zone here. Let's just go here. Could have probably kept that and then put the pressure here, but it does have the bishop and the queen supporting, so just thinking, why bother? Let's go with a quick rook opposite the queen. So that might work. We could always bring it back again, looking to keep some pressure. Let's develop the knight. We'll get the knight attacking the bishop. Ooh. Bishop's got space, but it's going to take space of the rook's position. It's attacking the rook, rook defends itself. And then the bishop's there forever, then the pawn pushes down on the knight. I think I'm going to keep my bishop alive. I think this is a crucial square for the knight. Yeah, so they've basically given us permission to go in and attack the bishop. If it's going there, it's blocking. Okay, it's not doing that. So we could go for a attack on their knight with a smaller piece. And let's take this off the board. Bishop comes down. And is attacking the rook. I'm quite okay with that. Let's bring the rook across. Probably looking to do a bit of a sack sack here. Making space for an attack on the king. So as you can see, we haven't got the dark squared bishop out yet. Um, I think I mentioned um, in one of the earlier videos where when you're developing, you're developing, yeah, your minor pieces first, if you can. It's really about developing appropriately, if it's needed, you know. So don't just rush out there and just go, well, I need to develop, and you're not actually finding a half-decent position for yourself. Let's hit this bishop with a smaller piece. Knight's still on their bishop. Bishop's trapped in there. Let's hit the bishop again with a smaller piece. And again. Okay. Now, we have options of going here. But I think if we go here first. Oh, it's not having the knight there. It's not happy with that. So the situation is bishop's going to be going here, it's going to be on the queen. I do like being near their king, so let's go here. Let's bring the bishop here just for a bit of activity, linking up the rooks. Start pressuring onto the only open file at the minute. So it looks like we've got some type of activity to be, yeah, we've only got the queen now. So we could start this attack. So if they do take, 
can start pushing towards the king area. Let's go with this one for now, and then we'll do this one. Maybe we're too slow. Okay, what's he doing? So he's attacking this pawn. If we go here, he does on pass on. Let's attack the pawn. Continue with that. Something's telling me it feels okay-ish to get some sort of disturbance towards the king. Yeah. Let's just go here. Let's just push the pawn. Nice. And put a check on the king. Let's just push on to this pawn here. We're looking if they do take, then it's got a check on the king. Checkmate, I think, because it got no nowhere to go. Attacking our queen. Um, could swing across, protecting the pawn. And we'll swing across and protect the pawn. We still do have the idea of this. It's given up the rook, so that might give us a clear way into um. Oh, that's a nice little gift. That's a nice little gift. Excellent. So that's pressure. Building slow pressure towards the king area. And um, yeah. I could see what they were trying to do, but it was easily defended because our pieces were in the appropriate positions. So it looks like they're going to. The light is still on, but I think they're going to resign now or just let the time run out. So I think I was really, I'm quite pleased with the development of that. And we chose to continue putting pressure towards the king area, which kind of, in a subliminal way, kind of forced the opponent to do some kind of crazy moves to try and prevent the attack on the king area. It's not saying we found the best moves at all in any way, shape or form. If we look at the analysis, it probably is going to say, well, no, that was not the way to go. So we'll do that. But... Always bear in mind, in the game, right here, right now, no matter what the evaluation says afterwards, our calculation brought out responses from our opponent that they didn't take advantage of any advantage that they poten potentially had because we utilised our own mantra, the answer process, trying to find appropriate positions, using smaller pieces to attack higher pieces to win important tempo in terms of improving our position on the board. So we believed using our own personal theory of the game. So we'll have a look at the analysis. And okay, let's um, go back, 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 back to where it potentially... Yeah, it was a strange kind of opening situation anyway. So we'll start from the start. Okay, so there. Yeah, pretty straightforward attacking the weak pawn, trying to go for a cheapy. And bringing the queen back. So we're currently advantageous, but it's nothing major. It's only plus ones, you, you know. Don't take any attention to the plus ones or that sort of stuff. And we're jostling for positions, smaller pieces attacking higher pieces, as we mentioned. And at this point, this is where we're wanting to try and start putting pressure towards the king area. They're not happy with our knight, so it's strange that a bishop did take a knight because they usually treasure the bishop. So at this point here, it's um, showing us as, as a draw. Yeah, that's fine, fine. So we're now looking to try and, excuse me, keep that pressure towards the king. Still showing us a draw. So this is this is the type of thing, you know, when you do your evaluation afterwards and you're thinking, oh, yeah, I did a fantastic entry in towards the King area. I must have been winning, blah, blah, blah. It's just showing us a draw. It's the belief in your own theory that, well, this is strong for me. It might not be strong for the computer, but this is strong for me. All depends on what the opponent's going to do. We're, we're willing to give this pawn up to win some type of tempo 
in putting pressure towards the king area. And it seemed to work out. It's like plus five. But with plus five, again, that's nothing major. That can be changed quite easily. And then we pushed the pawn. And look at that. We lost five, five points with the pawn push. How amazing is that? Rook d4, it's saying. Attacking the queen. I don't think that would have caused me any problems. So it's showing a draw from that move, but I would still do it now because of the psychological aspect of pushing towards the king area, trying to create something rather than being a little bit sitting back on my feet and just waiting for the opponent. I'd rather be activated and building building the attack nice and steadily, but also trying to cover off any um, blind spots that might occur. So we push the pawn again. It really doesn't like that. We've lost five points yet again. It's saying queen c4. Which is x-raying through to the king. Yeah, we're not, in it. we're not into them apples. Um, nice touch, but very happy with the pawn push. Um, we just want to dis disturb the king. And also, there is the plan of going for a checkmate type thing. And it's not happy with that. <laughs> it's not happy with that. Because we we wanted them to take. So if they did take, then we would get the um, checkmate in. Oh, it's saying three. Is the queen coming in or something? Yeah, the queen could come in and block it. Yeah, yeah, okay. But they didn't do that. But you never know. They could have done. You know, that's the thing about it. They could have done. And that would have given us a beautiful position. But the rook comes across. It's still showing us a draw. So realistically... There was only one section where it went down minus 0 0.3 or something like that. Uh, I think it was one of the pawn pushes. But it, it's not really gone any major way for black at this moment in time. So if it's either been a draw or we've been um, slightly advantaged. So that's good. So we moved the queen out of the way. Now it's a minus 0 0.5. Ah, okay. I'm still happy with that. And then they do capture and it's only plus 0 0.2 feeling very happy with that and this one gives us the game basically yeah because you can see you know this is like a stealth bishop and this is a free pawn and it's got to check on the king because it's a draw at this moment in time so waiting for the opponent to make some sort of slip up that's the whole kind of idea of chess because when you start a game of chess it's a draw yeah it's a draw from the beginning until somebody makes a mistake. Excellent. Okay, 10 and 0. And let's see what we can pick up and learn from today. Okay, we're going to just capture this pawn. I don't think I played this um, pattern position for a bit. So let's just push the pawn. we just do that to stop this pawn from coming here so we can develop the knight. So I'm going to develop the knight. Don't want to slow down my development of my castling. So let's castle. Don't get embroiled in anything the opponent's doing here. And I think just bring the bishop through. So now this might look like what I keep harping on about. I see other players playing where, you know, you're just um, playing football in your own half. This is different because this is active. Whereas the positions that I see played with the Fianchetto and the slow pawn pushes, it's not active. It's like they're don't, not getting the pieces out working together as a team. So this is slightly different. The comparison really to me is massive and it's understanding what you're actually doing. I'm trying to manage the centre as best possible. I'm not sitting back waiting for the opponent to actually come and attack. The opponent's done that of their own accord, so they're nicely extended. So we're now just going to do a smaller piece, attacking a higher piece. So we want to stay active in the game. So I'm going to bring the knight here. So active attacking as best possible. Smaller pieces attacking higher pieces. Let's grab. The more attacking we can do, the better, as far as I can see. The rook is opposite our queen. 
Do we need to worry about that? Do we need to bring the queen up towards their king area? Do we need to get the knight back into the game? If the pawn pushes down, we can still just take. I think we're going to bring the knight back in. So again, looking for things that we can attack or give them something to think about. Queen's in. And they've... Looks like they've resigned. The queen is in. Do you want to know why they resigned? Because the queen was supporting the knight here. So we've got a free knight. Okay, so lesson learned from this one is just take a little bit of time to have a look at what piece is defending which piece. And when before you've made the move, just check that um, all your pieces are safe. And yeah, okay, nice game-ish. Okay, so it looks like today's session is we're look, focusing more on the attack aspect of, of the game. And... Basically, giving them things to think about, focusing on that aspect um, in this particular session anyway. So we're going to grab. Because based from my experience of playing the game of chess, um, my own sort of style is, is an attacking style. Um, I think I potentially struggle with the strategic, you know, the long strategical non-activity type games. And that could be to my detriment, but everybody's got weaknesses that they want to work on. Do you know what I mean? So nobody's perfect. And because you have your own personal characteristics, um, you're not going to be able to fit every style, system, etc. You're going to have to make a choice as to what your playing style and system is, or else you're just going to be a jumbled up mess. So I know that I like attacking. Um, not into any of this strategical fancy play. Um, I understand it, um, but when it comes to all that tactical rubbish, I'm like, nah, I'm not into any of that. It almost feels like it's taking the soul out of the game. I'm going to attack the bishop, as we said, like like attacking. I did look and thought, well, I've got two pieces protecting here. If he does take, then I can improve my position a bit. Okay, we've got a dancer. We know what happens to the dancers. Um, they basically, hopefully, start hemming themselves in. Let's take with the pawn. We've got two pieces on here defending the queen. The move order would be to get this knight off the board if they're looking to trade or they're not doing that. So we're going to hit the queen. So do we get a free piece? So we get a minor piece up from that. So now we can take the queen off the board and that happened very quickly so yeah lessons learned from this one I, I, yeah i think it's the session today is coming out as an attacking session it's proactively attacking whether the um, evaluation shows that yes we're winning or anything like that um that's neither here nor there because during the game right here right now this is what happened so we looked like we won some tempo in terms of playing against a dancer who didn't want to actually trade off. So as we mentioned, they kind of do try, kind of hem themselves in if they're not willing to trade. All depends though. They may find good positions when they're not wanting to trade. But I've found from my experience that the majority of the times where they're not wanting to trade, the position we have is good enough that we're working our team together so then when they're running, they're closing down the span of movements that they can actually make, which are safe. And case in point here, um, the queen has actually taken when probably might have been better taken with the pawn. But let's have a look at the analysis very quickly. Let's just go back, 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 back. So it happened very quickly as we were talking about attacking. So taking a look at the positions that we've got, we're developing our pieces. We've got the minor pieces out. We've got the queen out, jostling now just for a nice position and then castling. So now we're attacking the bishop at this point. And uh, I'm not looking at the scores, but it's only plus one. It drops down because we're attacking. And then it goes to 
there. So then we're attacking again. And the pawn comes down. And at this point, it's not showing favourable because we can take the bishop off. Queen's taking. Now, I do think that the pawn should have taken here. It's only plus 5.9. So I think the pawn should have just taken. But they got a bit carried away taking with the queen. So we're still winning at this point in time so through active attacking. Keeping the pieces active. And causing the opponent to over overthink or underthink. So yeah, not too bad. 